Hi there. Today we're going to look at the Warburg effect, which is the hallmark of cancer. So let's get started. In the 1920s, Otto Warburg and his co-workers found out that the cancer cells have increased glycolysis rate, despite the presence of oxygen. And we called that aerobic glycolysis, which is also known as the Warburg effect. Shall we look into detail? In normal cells, glucose will convert to pyruvate by a process called glycolysis. In the presence of oxygen, the pyruvate will generate 36 moles of ATP in the mitochondria through oxidative phosphorylation. Some parts of the pyruvate will also convert to lactate, but the amount produced is insignificant. While in the absence of oxygen, the cells will convert pyruvate to lactate and generate only 2 moles of ATP. This process is known as anaerobic glycolysis. However, in proliferating or tumor cells, there is an increased uptake of glucose, which increases the rate of glycolysis regardless of whether oxygen is present. Only small amount of pyruvate will enter the mitochondria, and most of the pyruvate will undergo lactic acid fermentation and causes uncontrolled proliferation of cells. This phenomenon is known as the aerobic glycolysis, which is the Warburg effect. So, why do cancer cells activate glycolysis despite the presence of oxygen? This is to assure the synthesis of ATP when tumor outgrows its oxygen supply. Secondly, the metabolic intermediates of aerobic glycolysis, they provide raw material for synthesis of cellular components and rapidly dividing cells. In addition, they also favor tumor growth. We also know that in aerobic glycolysis, there is an increase in the conversion of pyruvate to lactate, leading to accumulation of lactic acid. This decreases extracellular pH, which favors tumor invasion and also suppresses immune effectors. That's the end of our video, this video is presented by Anya, Jareen, and Li Ying. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.